Donnie Houston. Subscribe to Donnie Houston Podcast, man. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a real special guest. Uh, hey, man, today's guest has been putting it down around the city for a long time. You may recognize him uh, with his air freshness, you know what I'm saying? Yandy air freshness going crazy, you know what I'm saying? Kill any smell you got going on in your ride when you're riding around doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, hey, check it out, man. Uh, he's here to, to, you know, just run down his whole life story, man, talk about how he even got to where he is right now. And I'm really looking forward to this, man. Yandy, how you doing, man? Man, I'm blessed to be here, man. For a long time, man. Hey, I came through with Cliche when Cliche was on your show, man. And uh, man, I'm just blessed and honored to be here, man. For sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. So what's what's going on, man? Man, it's a whole lot, man. Hey, man. I mean, the air freshness is, is booming right now. You know, we got man. There's so many things jumping off. We got. I I actually bought you a, a Yandy mixtape and DVD as well. That's for you. You know what I mean? Bad, 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 bad. You know, that's a classic, y'all. What, what you got on the mixtape of the DVD, right? Oh, man. Uh, we got the whole city on there uh, from, from block parties to, I mean, to the to the festivals that I've done, that uh, the Yanny promotion team has done. Uh, you know, Zero on there. Uh, you got Big Pokey. You got, man. You whole got city. The, you got the whole city Except on there. Except down in Houston. Maybe I'll make volume two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's so, up, man? Nah, so. I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's a it's a classic, man. It's been out now, maybe like I know for sure over ten years, for mm. sure. You know what I mean? Mm. Got all the block parties on there. Everybody representing the product. You know, uh, shouts out R.I.P. to uh, you know uh, Jimmy from the Southside Smoke Shop. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a section of that. You know, the block party from the from uh, the Smoke Shop on there, man. I mean, all my people from the north side, Lil Mario, J Dog on there representing just, you know, the whole industry, man. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Man, talk about because you got, you got the shop as well, right? Yeah, 239 Greens Road, right mm -hmm. there in the uh, International Marketplace on Greens Road, right directly across the street from the Greens Point Mall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we'll talk about the shop. What all kind of things? I know you can get the air freshening in the shop. You know what I'm saying? What all you got going on in the shop, man? Man, the shop. Do events at the shop. I know about the events and all that. Right on, know? right on. Yeah, I've done a couple of uh, uh, festivals, car and bike fest at the shop. And uh, I just learned from you, man, that uh, we got a little something in common, man. The shop was born September. Well, the shop ribbon cutting was September the 6th. I heard that oh, was yeah, your yeah, birthday. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had Kiki. Shouts out to Dunn Key. Shout out to Key. As you see, uh, you know, he was there with me during, during the ribbon cutting. You know, him and him and Cliche, you mm -hmm. know, they supported that. You know, uh, man, the shop. Man, I got everything in the shop from mixtapes to uh, to DVD videos um, from different people in the city. It's really like a um, it's a it's a smell good hip hop shop. It's the only one in Houston. You know what I mean? And uh, man, you can come there and find all kind of hip hop. You know, Houston culture. Hmm. You know, uh, man, I got wallets, watches, sunshades. You know, uh, diffusers, we sell the, the aroma diffusers there. Um, designer fashion accessories. We got the hood apparel, you know, where you can come get your own customized wherever you're from. You know, the shirts and the hat to match. You know what I'm saying? So A little bit of everything going on yeah. at the Andy Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The shop. What, what's the address on that? Uh, 239 Greens Road, Houston, 239 Texas, Green. directly across the street from... Uh, 
from the Greenspoint Mall. And then the uh, website to, uh, for anybody want to catch it online. Yeah, you can catch me online at the same thing, yandyshop.com. Hmm. So what made you want to go into opening the shop? I know you had a, you know a different life before you got here, but like what made you even want to take that route and everything? Well, uh, I would have to say I got a partner, man, old school partner named Mike, Michael Wiley. Shout out to Mike. You know his his people are uh, uh, they 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 own the Wiley Mortuary, the Wiley Funeral Home right there in Acres Home, but also you know his family is also a Wiley College. So he, he's one of my mentors, you know. He been, man, all the way from the block, from block hustling to, you know, talking me into, man, man, you ought to get you a shop, man. You ought to get you a shop, you know what I mean? So, I mean, this is uh, one of the guys, man, at one point in time, man, when I ain't even had no car, man, Mike would take me everywhere I needed to go to hit mm. all my licks, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? So I always make sure I put that out there, man, anywhere I'm at, you know what I mean? He was supposed to be here tonight, but he had some other stuff he had to do, so I salute that, you know what I mean? But, uh, man, I mean, it was, it was it was just the street grind. I wanted to turn the streets into a legitimate business. And I needed a place, I needed an address where people could, could go on certain days to where they could buy no matter if I'm in town or not. Hmm. So, you know, that's kind of like what influenced me to, you know, kind of step up my bids from out the trunk. I'm still out the trunk. You know, you that ain't never that, going nowhere. You yeah, get yeah, that yeah. right now. Matter of fact, I just made a sale uh, uh, on the way in here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So hmm. that's pretty much what it was, man. That's what you say when you're not in town because you, you drive, uh, you're in the trucking and all that right now, right? Well, no, nah, um, I do um, I do oil and gas. Uh, industry mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and what I do with that I don't pay none of my bills with with the money I make from uh, you know working at the chemical plant and doing all these jobs I invest into my business hmm. into my product I said entrepreneur talk come on man right so I invest you know hey and you know right now I'm back in the city right now so hmm. so I'm gonna just go full-fledged with with my business for oh you right back now. in H for for good now yeah I'm back in H right now yeah for sure already already yeah, yeah well man so. tell me because I I know you know what I'm saying it was a it was a it was a road getting to this point you know what I'm saying okay. I know it was a road take take me back to growing up in the city what side of town what neighborhood you know what I'm saying just okay. life you know coming up in H so uh, basically man uh, I can start with. Uh, Arcola, Texas. I'm from. I'm, I'm originally from a small town called Arcola, right there, Arcola and Fresno. Fresno. Everybody mm -hmm. know Fresno because that's where everybody moving. But when I was coming up as a little kid, they I mean, called it Arcola. It was Arcola, <laughs> Fresno. You feel me? I'm talking about. We used to go hunting. You know, it was it was the country life. You know what I mean? Uh, pretty much for it being, you know, my my side of that that side of the family, my dad's side. Our name is known for. Uh, athletics. Hmm. So I was an athlete for, you know, Fort Bend. You know what I mean? I, I ran the rock. I played football for Dulles, Clements. I was the first graduating class out of Crystal McCullough. You know what no I'm saying? No shit. Yeah. I, Grace went to school. I was, I, me and Grace was in elementary Oh, yeah, I was in the, yeah, so you in that area with them? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the Grace, you know, out of the bar. Yeah. yeah okay. Grace, Grace used to come by, man, and get me out of home room. To my Clyde, Clyde, come on, man, come on, man. So I tell my teacher, man, I need to go to the restroom. You know what I'm saying? I leave out just to go to the commons. I used to make beats, beatbox for Grace while he rapped. We was in elementary, bro. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people ain't know this, you know what I'm saying? But all, all the while, this is the reason why I never exposed it, because it was something that I'm doing with a project. Shouts out to my man, Strict Hustle. You know what I mean? Uh, we we putting a project. We're working on a project called the Evolution, and uh, and what that is is life before the Yandy brand. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Were you always going by Yandy? Is that like a family name or like where you where you get to? Man, let me tell you where I got Yandy from, man. So, as I grew up, my mama's side is from Studiewood, Independent Heights. So I ended up going to Wild Trip, Booker T. I, man, I've been all over the city, man. You know what I mean? Um, Man, they used to have a little a little hole in the wall club called Candy's Hideaway, 
which was Mama Lena. She used to own that spot, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, them was my days when I used to get fucked up. You know what I mean? Man, I used to get fucked up and tell my partners, hey, man, I'm finna go to Yandis. You know what I'm saying? My millennials used to sell a drink out the back door. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, man, hey. So, you know, when I, I end up on my road, my journey ended up in prison. So when I got out of jail, um, I, had got a, I had got a job at this place called Texas Candle Warehouse Supply. And that's why I learned how to mix the, the fragrance. Cause they had me working in the in the in the. Oh, room. I didn't know you was hands on with this. Yeah, no, I make this product myself. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's why it ain't no cut. It's straight drop. It's, hmm. Yeah, it's straight drop. Yeah, I mix this stuff up about a twenty gallons at a time. Each cent, twenty gallons at a time. Cause if if I don't, then I'm losing on 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 the, on the profit. It don't even make sense to make it if I ain't mixing up twenty gallons of each. Fragrance at a time. How long is that process to, to put to put these together? Man. Say to, to do a batch, you know, 20 gallon, you know. Okay, so I'm going to say this. Uh, shouts out to Mama Mo. Uh, I'm making I'm make my, my new scent coming this week. I've been working on it for like three months trying to get it the same scent every time. Don't tell so, me. Don't tell me it's going to smell like bar. Nah, nah well... Yeah. It's called Purple Punch. The The name of the scent is going to be called Big Mo. But then it's Purple Punch scented, right? But it smells like, it smells like great. It's purple too. Hmm. Yeah, and it, and that boy hang around for a minute. That boy going to dog some, whatever the scent <laughs> is, going to dog it, man. So, <laughs> so but man, um, just the process on the mix probably about an eight hour process hmm so each cent for the for the most part you doing eight hours or yeah 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 yeah, hmm. yeah the first time right. but once i get the formula down then i just it, it's it probably take about an hour or two hmm. just to mix hmm. you know what i'm saying that's live that's live okay so yeah so so okay you're going to chris mccullough for grace doing well it? me and grace went to blue ridge elementary well, elementary school i'm sorry right I'm sorry yeah yeah then you go to chris mccullough yeah, I went to yeah. Once I left uh, Blue Ridge, I went to Quail Valley Junior High. Then they rezoned us from staying in Fresno and Arcola. They rezoned Close to the us McC right, to right. Crystal McCullough. You know what I'm saying? So when I left Crystal McCullough, what then, what year did McCullough open up? I was supposed to graduate ninety one. So about eighty six. About that time, eighty five, eighty six. Hmm. Yeah, because I used to go watch uh, Thurman Thomas play at Willow Ridge. Hmm. Now you're talking about some old city history right like, now. Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this history. Real talk. It's history right here. I mean, it's, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Hmm. Yeah. I Man, okay, so so you so you go from Quill Valley to McCullough, you playing ball. Yeah. Football, basketball, everything? Or just football, football, basketball, track. It's all around athlete. Yeah. And and at this time you just doing straight kids and you ain't really dabbling in, in it. Yeah, I ain't really because you got to look at it. You know, um, my my main thing, my main focus was you know because in our household it was all about sports because the my, lineage. from my uncle is lineage, right? Yeah, I mean that's just what it was. You know what I mean? And uh, then I went on to play for Dulles, then Clements. And uh, I even, man, I even played for Kempner. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But so. Why, why were you going to so many schools? Were they, were they rezoning y'all all the time? At first, they was rezoning. And then when I went to Kempner, that's when my life took a. At Kempner? Yeah. Like when I, when I went to Kempner, because it was it was family problem. My mom and dad and it was finna split up. You know, get a divorce and all of that. So that's what. That's that took a toll on you, and you kind of just that, became that, rebellious. That or? Made, yeah, that made me totally. Cause I, I, for the whole time, I thought my mom and dad was gonna be together forever. When you kids, you think that. You know what I mean? Especially if you didn't, you know. So I'm, I'm maybe, I'm maybe about fourteen, fifteen now. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about, you know, colleges and everything, reaching out, take, you know, trying to. 
see what's up on site, you know, what school I'm going to go to, like a promising future, you know what I mean? And uh, my grades were decent and everything, you know, so. But after that, it just, then when I left Kipner, I went back to Clements. And that's when the actual divorce happened. So when that happened, my mom moved back to Studiewood. But the whole time, during the summertime, people in Fort Bend that are cold, they never seen me, you know, uh, in, in Fort Bend. I would always be in Studiewood with my kinfolk. You know what I'm saying? So, but now, I'm moving out there. So now, and then, I'm already on the rebellious mode. Then, you know, mom we got an apartment on 34th Street over mm -hmm. by Sherwood Lane, right down the street from Wild Trip. So now, you You're in know, the mix as a different I'm, type of, yeah. I'm in the mix, bro. And now I'm driving back and forth, trying to still hold on. To you know, to my legacy, you know what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm driving back and forth from the north every day to uh, to Clements. Actually, I used to carpool with my partner named Trina You from Third Ward. <laughs> they was actually doing the same thing, so we would carpool. You know what I'm saying. Trina actually went to uh, Arkansas. He went to Arkansas uh, Razorbacks. You know what I'm saying. So he he followed his he 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 stayed with it. You know what I mean and. Uh, but so what ended up happening, man, you know, right there on 34th for Sherwood, man, on Sherwood was just off the chain. But I would be exercising and jogging around the way. And this is a crack here, so it's, it, it's, yeah, it's going crazy outside. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I would just see what it was, you know what I'm saying? But I, you know, it, but all, but what was funny about it, all, all the dope dealers, man, they would embrace me on doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So I still, I, they took a, a liking to me. All, it, it's just been like that. Ever since I moved out there, it just, man, all the smokers and all, all the drug dealers, the killers, the robbers, they, they cut for me for some reason. I'm a, they are, it's an attraction, right? So what ended up happening was, man, The lights was out. Um, my mom, right? So, me being rebellious now, you gotta think I'm still, I'm the oldest son. I still got a little bro, you know what I mean? So man, I used to always see those those, those Mexicans cash the check that Mr. Paul stole. And they would put that money in their boots, right? So, man, I went down there, I slammed the door, ran out the apartments. I was like, where you going? Where you going? Man, I'll be right back. Got to go catch the Mexicans. <laughs> Man, bro. And then, I, you know, I was I was in good shape. Caught the Mexican at the pay phone. Boom. Dowed him in the chest. Dropped him. And hit them boots. Got me 800 out of his boots. You know what I'm saying? Ran to the highs. Gave my mama the money. Hmm. She ain't asking about where this money came. Yeah. She's like, where you get this money from? What's it? What you doing? You know, you know how that, you know how that's gonna go. Boom! I ran back out the house, slammed the door. Like, hey, you got the money for the bill? Go on, pay it. Or if you don't pay it, hey, you got the money. You know what I'm saying? So I ran back down on Sherwood, man. And I was like, man, I ain't finna never be broke again, bro. Mm. You know that was too mean? easy. I ain't never finna be broke again. So what I did was I went to my partner named JB. JB was the one who had all the work. So I went in the White House apartments, man, and told Jay. At first, he wouldn't sell me nothing. He was like, man, I ain't selling you nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because you going to school. He didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? But I was sat down and explained to him what I just did and what happened. So he served me. And ever since then, bro, you know what I'm saying? I got in, I got in, I got in the game. Hmm. And I ain't going to lie, I was lame. I was lame as hell, bro. Man, I'm talking about, I used to give all my dope away, bro. <laughs> Till a smoker taught me, bro, you giving too much work away. Oh, you, you didn't know, know how to measure it up. I didn't, I didn't I didn't, I didn't know what was what, so I was cutting big pieces. That's why I had all the clientele. So not I, knowing you short. Not, not knowing I'm shortening myself, right? So I learned, everything I learned from the drug game, I learned from a smoker, bro. 
I learned how to cook. I learned how to cut up the right, whatever, whatever. And then back then, this was so far back in the game, bro, it wasn't cell phones. We had pages, bro. I still remember my page number, 713-210-6511. Hit me up, put double zero behind your number and how much you want. And I'm going to stop at a pay phone, call you, and I'm going to bring you what you want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, wait, do you abandon high school at this point, or are you still just trying to do both? So, so what ended up happening was, now I'm going to summer school at Wild Trip. End up getting into a fight with the security guard at Wild Trip, get kicked out of summer school. Now I'm going to Booker T the next year. Now, Booker T is where all my kid folk, man, they said, no, they look cold. <laughs> It's like Cooley High. It's like Cooley High, bro. And But they had a coach. Coach Coleman was still trying to get me to go to Northwestern University. Coach Coleman knew what it was with me. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to steal me from that life. But, man, I was already in it making money. And I never let all my kinfolk know what I was doing in Studiwood. I was doing this on Sherwood. You get what I'm saying? So... um after that, man, I'm going to Booker T. Now it's, now it's dropout time. Hmm. You know what I mean? I had one of my partners from Clements. He was going, he played linebacker. He was going to Prairie View. He's supposed to went to Oklahoma, but he's going to Prairie View. He ended up coming with me on, <laughs> on Sherwood. Because, <laughs> I mean, hey, he was wide trying open, to get yeah. to the block wide open. He seen how much money I was making. I'm in rental cars every week going up there to Prairie View to mess with him. You feel me? So it was like, man, it was it was wide open then, bro. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing because the only one who could really discipline me was my daddy. You know, dudes, when they're young, they run over their mamas, mm -hmm. man. You know that, man. Not trying to do it, but... It's instinct. That's the way it go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't help no more because my mama ended up... Uh, the guy that she married the next time, he never had a job. So how can you tell me to get a job? Then... He he was he was a gambler, so he in the streets. So that made it all right for me. Like I'm all right now. That made it all right because if he can do it, I know I can do it. You can't tell me not to go get. A, you can't tell me to go get a job. But the dude you lay with every night, this man a grinder. He 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 a gambler. So I mean, hey, I'm out here. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then I get caught up. Of how, how 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 long how far are you in high school at this point? You junior year, senior year, where you at? Uh, by now, I'm like junior year, my junior year, and then like the beginning of my senior year, man, I was already coming to the school. I was coming to school selling packs and everything. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Booker T, they gambling in the. In the hall and everything, man. It's it's just, it ain't nothing like for being. So now I'm wide open now. I'm having it, quotas, unquotas, having it in my way. You know what I'm saying? So went through all of that, man. And uh, next thing you know, I'm in the game deeper and deeper. Now I find other stuff to sell, like drink, wet, everything. You know what I mean? And then now I'm going to Cornbreads. Hmm. I'm seeing Big Mo, you know? <laughs> but I'm in the streets though. I'm I'm not in the industry yet. I'm doing no promotion, doing none of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just in the streets with with what I got to sell. I'm at I'm at cornbreads all night. But you talking about cornbreads? Now we in like like mid to like late nineties, kind of like. Brown, what year is this? Like ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere over there. Cornbreads was like earlier than that. That's late nineties. Cornbread was probably like nine, yeah, probably like nine six, something like that. Nine six. I didn't nine, know it was seven. that early. No shit. Yeah, cause I was staying on. Uh, I was hustling in Studiwood now, and, and I had a townhouse on uh, Wilkers being townhomes. Hmm. So I go to go out there to the north, do my dirt, come back to the highs on the west you know what i'm saying i remember that because 9495 that's when the rockets was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i remember that part of the game you know what so I mean? what so what year were you supposed to graduate 91 91 okay so now we're talking about five six years out of that okay so right. okay if you had to paint the picture because cornbread's been coming up a lot lately if you had to paint the picture of what cornbread was 
for anybody that ain't never been there. Could you could you really paint that picture and put us right there at Cornbread Park? I could line? definitely do that. Cornbreads, man, had some of everybody in the city of Houston, man. And you didn't have to pay to get in the door. You paid at the gate. You paid at the entrance. It was a line wrapped around cars paying to get in the entrance, right? So they would check and see how many heads are in the car. Some people used to duck down, man. So I they heard people be hiding in the trunk <laughs> all kind of shit trying to get them. Yeah. <laughs> man, but Cornbreads, man, I'm talking about it was just a... A nighttime block party. If they went in, they went in to use the restroom or to get a drink or to shoot some pool. Other than that, everybody in the parking lot doping, man. Mm. I ain't gonna even lie. Back then, it wasn't nothing, man. Hey, man, if you didn't bring you a pack of cornbread, you was a user, bro. Mm. For real. Mm. All the hustlers used to go to cornbread, bro. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, I was moving everything. I had wholesale on the work, weed, drink, and I had strikes of wit. And the water was big and the water was big in that part. It was big back then. Mm -hmm. I was working with Joe Boy, man, from Hershey Wood. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And uh hey, man, you know, uh free that boy. He you know, he still locked up behind that shit, bro. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I used to I used to see Big Mo. Uh Poke it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody was at the bridge, man. I'm talking about it wasn't no really wasn't no squabbling or nothing. Everybody was there was just just a ball out, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm talking about man. The bridge. What, what's was what's, what's some of your favorite memories from that corner? Cause I see you going back when I when I look at you like yeah shit. Yeah, that the bridge. What's some what's something you, that you'll never forget that might have went if, down in that corner? If you was a player. You can go to the bridge and get you a girl, man. Like, it ain't nothing, man. I ain't going to lie. I'm talking about they, long as you had you a sweet, long as you had you some good <laughs> long as you had you some good weed or something, man. Hey, man, it was just, it ain't like it is today, bro. Back then, I mean, it was just legendary times, man. I mean, we was out to have a good time. I mean, that's what it was, like. It wasn't really no tripping. Every now and then it was a squabble though, I ain't gonna lie. But it wasn't, oh man, the bridge got shot up. Nah, it wasn't it wasn't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And people used to come out there, man, and just sit in a car or everybody hanging out, you know, everybody networking. Hmm. That's just it was just so player. Cause and then you never know who you would see there. Like, it wasn't nothing to see Big Mo or, you know, all the Slim, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, it wasn't nothing to see the Houston legends in the parking lot just doing their thing. And you could walk up on them and, and holler at them. It wasn't, wasn't nobody tripping, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. So, yeah, it was loud. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. At this point, are you experiencing, like, any of the, like, the bullshit that come with the game where you like, man, I don't know if this is what I want to be doing. And you just, you just all the way in, like, shit, this is life right now. Well, I remember – when Tupac came out with a uh, straight balling, right? Me and my partner, who I told you that came from uh, uh, PV, which is from PV, <laughs> we used to call that living it up. Hmm. The straight balling, we was already doing that before he came out. We just called it living it up, meaning, hey man, we used to be at <sighs> Boomerang on Sundays, man, chocolate time. Man, we was just in the mix, cause you know, like I said, during the day I'm 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 moving my packs, but at nighttime I'm selling my party drugs, so I'm in the mix, and people knew, they knew me for. He was a notorious hustler, like right, mm-hmm. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So man, when does when does uh? Cause you said somebody going to jail. Was this before all this happened, or did you have to catch some time like in between our uh, between where we at right now? Yeah, like I definitely did. I I uh I ended up like nine like ninety like ninety one. Went to jail, got out, like nine three, made a baby. My daughter. So you got caught up hustling ninety one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um that's how I was able not to go to college. That's what that's what killed it. 
You know what I mean? Get so, the charge you can't get Yeah, it. You, back then, it wasn't, you do that, you, you out of there. You know what I'm saying? Got out 9-3, you know what I'm saying? Uh, conceived my daughter. She was born like January 22nd, 94. You know what I mean? So then I ended up back and forth, bro. You know what I mean? And, um, and like all the way up until... So basically what started happen, happening was I started using my head. Because then I started like... I bumped in, you know, I was in the mix, like at Chocolate Town and all of that. So I ended up bumping bumping into uh, Captain Jack. Hmm. That's where I initiated, started learning the promo game. So I was still dibbling, dabbing, doing my thing, but I started dealing with the promo. And during this time, I was with a group called the Real Ghetto Stars. And it was it was it was me, Lil C, Shoo Shoo, Booty Cool, R.I.P. Booty Cool, R.I.P. Spike Mike. You know what I'm saying? That was our group. And when you uh, say group, it's a rap group or like a promotional? Yeah, group? no, it was a rap group. It was a rap group. So I used to sing the hooks. You know, I did a few little old. You know, had my own raps too. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, we was the kind of group, bro. We we were street hustlers though. So we was like, bro, if if we never make it in this rap shit, man, we're gonna always be real ghetto stars, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, we didn't we we, we didn't care about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I remember I worked at the barber shop on Yale at Players Cuts, and um, um, rapper lot came and wanted to holler at us, right? And uh, my, my, my partner, Lil C, he used to be part of Too Much Trouble. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Back in the game. So I used to roll with him. You know what I mean? I used to roll with him, go to all the shows. So Big Chief and all them knew us. You know what I'm saying? So they had called us over to the compound. And, uh, you know, they had our music and everything. <clears throat> and um, they was talking about signing us and putting us in the studio. But what ended up happening is my, my partner Lil C ended up when we had the meeting, instead of him going just with us, he took my other partner, Super Dave. And with Super Dave knew how to make beats. Mm. So of course they gonna choose the person who can produce and you know what I'm saying? So that was our little kill spill on that part. But we still we was man, we was opening up show for Big Hawk. Uh, we was in Tyler opening up show for Big Mo, and at that time, Big Face, R.I.P. Big Face, Big Face was our manager, in which Big Face was was doing shows uh, for Slim back then too. He was he was a I learned promotions and marketing from Big Face as well. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, and so now I'm in I'm in the I'm in the music industry now. Still going to Cornbridge, got Big Mo singing my hooks and shit. You know what I'm saying? So mm. we live. You know what I'm saying? He already a lot of them cats knew me from the streets before they even I even dealt with any marketing promotions or anything. The relationship they, had already just been built. Just yeah. Yeah, it was already built. As you know, what I'm saying this the dude. If I'm on the north, I can call him, get me a stick or something. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So matter of fact, when the eight ball pool hall was open, man. A lot of y'all remember the eight ball pool hall, man, right there on Parker, you know, and uh, 45. Uh, I'll never forget, Screwed Up Click had a show. It was Poker, Grace, Mo, ESG, you know what I'm saying? It was some, it was some dude from my hood talking about, uh, Yandy, man, somebody, uh, Big Poker want you, man, Big Poker want you. I'm like, yeah, okay, calm down, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they never, they tripping because they, they rappers to them, not knowing right, y'all and I right, already crowd right. stuff. I've been dealing with these cats. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, like, man, come on, man, hurry up, hurry up. I said, all right, bro, y'all come. Right, so, but all the while, Poker was up in the Navigator, and shit, he was getting ready for the show. He needed him, you know, he had one of them stick or something. You know what I'm saying? So I'm making money, you feel me? And, um, shoot. You know, it was just used to be a trip how 
when I worked at the barbershop, boys used to think that, oh, man, he lying. You know what I'm saying? I tell them, man, I just mess with 3-2 with everybody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Until 3-2 used to be with uh, my partner named B for Fifth Ward. So B would come up to the barbershop and bring three up there. You know what I'm saying? So me and three will go around on the side of the building and do our thing. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? So a lot of people didn't really believe that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you ain't messing with them, man. I'm like, boy, y'all tripping. Like, you don't even know, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm out here grinding, bro. I'm, I'm grinding from, I don't care what side of town I'm on, fam. You know what I'm saying? Because I never got caught up in the north and the south. And you was that, always doing both. Yeah, because my daddy's side is from this side and my mama's side from this side. So I never, I was on both sides. I never really got caught up in that. You know what I'm saying? I always, it's ace time, you know? But I've done, I represent Studiwood because that's where I got all my game and that's what the, 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 the streets molded me, bro, into mm. who I am today. You know what I'm saying? As far as man, I'm talking about in, in studio, bro. You gonna be a you gonna be a, a, a prime time hustler, or grinder, or you gonna be a strong out dope fiend, fam. Mm. That's studio, bro. I ain't gonna even lie to you. That's just what those streets produce, bro. You know what I mean? And anybody know about it, they can vouch for that. It's it's that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? So. Hey, I chose to be the prime time hustler. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. Oh, so. the cool. So when so when does when does the promotions like really start turning up and what type of things are you promoting when you start getting into the promotion game? Well, the promotion game, mainly like uh different clubs. Man, I promote it. After dealing with you already know Captain Jack, shout out to Unc, man. That's my mentor as well, man. Uh he taught me a lot of you know, different, uh, uh, different um, strategies as far as with, when it comes to marketing and promotions, um, especially with the lounges, the clubs. Man, I've I promoted. Let me see my first club. The first club I promoted, man, I had paper flyers, y'all. Hmm. I promoted um, club success was after hours. On uh, was that Tidwell, Tidwell and Ella. It was an after hour called Club Success. Then I promoted CB's Acres Home. That was another after hour. Then I promoted Breakers on Breakers North on Antoine. Because you remember they had the Breakers yeah, South. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So after Breakers, uh, I promoted the Blue Ocean on the North East Side. That's with Shake It. Shout out to Old Man Shake It, man. Um, I mean, and just dealing with all these club owners, bro, taught me a lot as well. You know what I mean? So are you still hustling when you in the promotions, or like, or you, or you just kind of doing a little bit of both and trying to make that transition? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of both, but now I'm doing more of like, uh, like I'm block bleeding. I'm like the movie game came, so I was like, man, I ain't just finna, you know, I ain't finna sell no more dope. You feel me? So the movie game was just like the dope game. I was six for 20 hmm. in San Antonio, <laughs> Prairie View. I was hitting all the country towns like I would do with with everything else. So yeah, that, at, hey, that bootleg DVD game era, man, people don't man, know, man. Listen, bro. Boy, that. Yeah. Hey, man, people bought houses and homes off selling music and movies, bro. I ain't going to even lie to you. For real, they did. It was a, it was, it was lucrative, fam. And it, and you you your 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 turnaround was way more than dope, bro. I don't care what your whip game was like, man. Hey, man, you can't you 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 can't compare. You doing, the, spend a little time burning up the boy, DVDs you and you hit the, the black. Profit. Yeah. Can't compare the profit, bro. And then you feeling like you ain't finna go to jail. <laughs> you feel me? Because early on, I mean, later on, you know what I'm saying, the feds might come, but. Yeah, Early, yeah. I ended up going to jail for that too, though. No uh, shit. On Cullen, yeah, man. I went to jail on Cullen for movies. Had my van. Uh, <laughs> the side of the the side the uh, the side of the doors was open, and you know I used to have them in that little mm -hmm. little book album, right? Mm -hmm. Man, them people came and sees all my movies. Man, I ended up going to jail for that. That was on Cullen. Then I got busted in Studiwood. 
on uh, at the car wash on Yale and Cross Timber. Then I got busted way in Meridian, Mississippi, bro, after the Essence Festival. I was killing them. I'm talking about, I, was, I remember, I'm going from city to city, state to state. How much money, just to put it in, in perspective for anybody watching this, like, man, no, nah, you can't. How much money we talking about, you know what I'm saying, when you talking about making them DVDs in about a week, you'll say? I, okay, I, I'll just say from Thursday to Sunday, I know going out of town and coming back from Thursday to Sunday, I know I'm about like twenty five and $3,000. Just from Thursday to Sunday, bro. You know what I mean? And like I say, you know, my partner Lil C, he was hooked up with Showtime. Shout out to Showtime. You know what I'm saying? Ace Town Underboss. Uh, he was already on, um, uh, doing music or on his mixtape. So then uh, I got hooked up with Show. And after I booked Show to do a concert at Breakers North, I left on the road with show that night, bro. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, cause the people at Breakers wouldn't treat me fair, you know, especially on that night, you know what I mean? And then they had the dudes for rap a lot to come in and get money on the dough. Like, dang, how, 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 how nigga how you do- supposed to make your promotion money? Yeah, you know? how these people get money on the dough? So I took my signs off, off my car. I had a white Lincoln with the Breaker signs on the side. I took them off and whew, Threw him, threw him at the owner, man, and burn off. I went on the road with show. And I stayed on the road with show at least seven years, bro. Hmm. Selling like, uh, man, mixtapes with the videos. And at that time, the road was lovely. You know what I'm saying? We, I mean, and I was already on the road with, with the other work that I had. But now I jump in with show and we grinding, you know what I'm saying? So it was cool to meet somebody else who was just on the same grind, you know what I'm saying? And then later on, you know, he had, he came out with Purple Stuff first, and uh, I used to jump in with him and sell Purple Stuff. And then, you know, then that's when I was like, well, I stayed on the road with him seven, seven years, so I started going back in the trenches myself, you know, with, with, with my own product. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but people already knew me for being, oh, that's the dude to be with show. So I was straight in, you know what I mean? And then now I got my own street team and we rolling. Hmm. But now I would go into a little bit more deeper crevices though, in the hood, you know what I mean? I mean, even Lake Charles, shout out to Gosport, car shop, you know, uh, man, everywhere, St. Louis, you know what I mean? Just. Uh, San Antonio, um, man, shout out to them boys on uh, I-10 and MLK, you know what I mean, just all over, man, you mm. know what I mean, so, yeah, it was, it, it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey, man, mm. it's been a journey, man. You talked about, you said you run in the industry, when do you start kind of linking up even more with like, like your cliches and more like really getting involved with the, with the Houston industry, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so the time I was rolling with show, uh, we had this deal called New Timers Colony. I mean, everybody was in there, bro. It was me, show, uh, Clee, uh, Lil B from Slow Lot and Banger, shout out to Lil B. Uh, man, shout out R.I.P. to Wicked Cricket. He was in on the squad. Man, we had so many people, bro. Peter Roll, uh, Young Sam. Young <laughs> Sam was a youngster, but Young Sam was in there with us. Uh, man, Charlie Berry. Man, it was uh, Dougie D, my kinfolk, Zero Brother. My, uh, yeah, Dougie, shout out to Dougie. I fuck with Dougie D, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how. I think that's why I met you. I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah, why yeah. I met you before I, I really with him with Dougie back D, in the man. game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, yeah, shout out to my kin folk, Dougie, and man, you know uh, who else? Man, we had our uh, Black Alec. I mean, it was everybody. We it, it was a big crew, bro. Black Alec from what? From out here? Yeah, yeah from yeah, from yeah. the aristocrats. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's my man now. Yeah. That's my man. Yeah. So we uh see so but but what the what the strategy was, everybody was supposed to take the mixtape and we would all go out, okay, we would say, Me, Dougie and Lil B, 
boom, we gonna hit uh, Lafayette, Rain, Eunice, Crowley. Okay, then you might have Cliche and Charlie Berry and somebody else. Boom, they gonna hit like South Texas. They gonna go towards like uh, Mac Allen and all of that, right? And then show and you know and somebody else they'll take a crew and go up towards like Midland, Odessa, or whatever. But we all on this one mixtape, so it's getting us all out there. But back then, when the internet wasn't like it was, we put in the grind, bro. You know what I mean? Like the street grind. You know what I'm saying? Even like I keep saying cliche, she was like the only female out there with us, bro. Like Clee knew Clee know the grind as far as like the industry, the, the real grind of out there selling her CDs, selling her mixtapes and you know what I'm saying? So that's why I salute, you know what I mean? For female, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. not, not cliche for sure. Yeah, man. not no big female either, <laughs> little, you know what I'm saying? So man, you know, with heart though. She out there with us grinding, man, and you know, I mean, hey, and the way I look at it today, I know we got the Megan, the Stallions, and, you know, but they don't know that grind, bro. Mm -hmm. They they probably will never know it. You know what I'm saying? Because of the internet. But I salute to the internet, too, because now I could put the same stuff I'm doing in the streets on the net. Mm -hmm. So if it's a rainy day, I can't get out here and grind and pop the trunk, but I can work the net all day. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, it's 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 a different day and time for sure. Hmm. You know what I mean? What would what would you say for anybody that wants to like kind of follow your footsteps as far as really jumping out there with the entrepreneur, having your own product, or all that? What would you give advice for like anybody who wants to you know take that route? I would say the best advice I could give, bro, is number one, have faith in God and have faith in yourself. For number one, hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and man, follow the model that came before you did. I mean, I think that's the biggest deal with you that's know everything. I always say, study the greats, man. You got to study bro. the people that were successful in what you're doing before you. You, you got know. to. You got to. And I think that's the deal with quotas, unquotas, as we say these days. You know, the younger generation, they feel like they've done it, bro. You gotta. Look at the people that was before you. Then you take what they did, and then you put it in your gumbo or funk, and then you put your own swagger to it. You know what I'm saying? But nothing new is up under the sun. Nothing is already been done. But you take it and you elevate it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of people be like, yeah, I'm self-made. Or I'm, you know, I'm self-made or I'm one deep. But, bro, you're you, you, you not self-made. Somebody before you came. And that's how you was made. You feel what I'm saying? So, and then it take a team. It, 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 you can't get around mm -hmm. not having a team. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I just want to shout out to the, at this point in time, just saying that before I forget, I want to shout out to the, the Yandy brand ambassadors. I'm talking about the ones that are here now and uh, I want to shout out to the ones who who already completed the course and have their own business there are some that completed the course Cause you've been able to do that we were talking about that you've been able to like spawn your own you know class of hustlers and people who, who came behind you following your blueprint and being able to take it and go their own way right definitely definitely and uh shout out to uh, Yandy Malamicia, she's one of the ones who, uh, she has her own clothing brand uh, called um, Chocolate, Chocolate Snack uh, Clothing, Clothing Line, um, Chocolate Factory. Um, um, who else? Uh, Yandy Model, uh, Deja, she's a, uh, she's a um, content creator and she's doing well as far as with beauty and travel. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, um, who else? Uh, the first one of the first ones, Yandy Model Riri. She, uh, I mean, every time, every time she posts something now, she able to, you know, have her own business as well as far as uh, marketing and promotions, because she got so many followers to where she she's able to, you know, have people to pay thirty, forty dollars, or however much she charges to post their stuff on her page. 
You know what I'm saying? So it works. Mm. It works, man. And you know that's that's what I'm here for. I feel like that's what I'm here for for because, um, I mean, when you've been through all of what I've been through, fam. As far as this hustle, this grind, and you know, from being a street hustler to turning um, into a legitimate entrepreneur, a business entrepreneur. I mean, the biggest thing is, bro, is to birth others, hmm. help others, bro, mm -hmm. because that's how you're gonna continue to get your blessing. That's how God gonna keep you on. And that's how you measure a lot. It's like, I always measure success. Like, okay, that's cool. You did great for yourself. But how many people did you help in the process, though? Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You keep it out for yourself. Like, yeah, I mean, that's cool. But, right. you know, that's ain't what life about, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, everybody has somebody help them in some form of fashion. Yeah, you know, for sure. Just big smile. Somebody put a call in for you. But are you acknowledging it, though? That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. And I got this thing called... Uh, you know, I always say OG Yandy, and I, but the OG don't don't stand for original gangster. It's, it stand for on guard. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but my thing is to let you know to let people know is that, bro, you can't call yourself an OG if you ain't got no baby G's, bro. You feel me? So in my mind, OG is a teacher. So if you ain't got no students, bro, how you an OG? And the thing is. What kind of teacher are you? Are you putting people on to the path crash? Of righteousness or the on to yeah. Right. Yeah. To crash? To help them crash their life? Or are you putting them on to do something positive? You know, to have to change their mindset for them to do something positive in their life, to help them. You know what I mean? So that's you know, that's that's where I you know, a lot of people be like, Man, why you always call yourself OG Yandy? Yeah, because, bro, I'm on guard right now. Hmm. I ain't on the original gangster type deal no more. It ain't even about that. You know what I'm saying? And I want the younger generation to see that, bro. You know what I'm saying? That ain't your big homie, bro, if he showing you a way of destruction. Your big homie is the one who's showing you a way away from destruction, showing you something that, that, that you can better yourself with, per se. You know what I'm saying? So... And like I say, man, I the streets been I, I I'm like Pimp say, man. Shout out to Pimp, man, cause <laughs> Pimp always say, man, the streets been good to me. You know what I mean? You know, even you know, even though through the rough parts of being, you know, in jail and you know all of that. I mean, but that's what come with that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, as long as you learn from your mistakes then, you know, you shouldn't have no complaints, man. And the main thing is, bro, I mean, you got to do whatever it take out here to get your grind on to brand your own self. Nobody's going to brand you like you. You know what I'm saying? Just like right now, I like the hat. You know what I'm saying? Exactly right, yeah. That's branding. Yeah, nah, I mean, you ended it down. You yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of sidebar, hey, check it out, man. We got the brand new... Uh, DHP uh, Choppers T-shirt, you know what I'm saying? That was yeah. Four man Choppers, man. You know what I'm saying? The three bar rim. We celebrating three years. You know what I'm saying? Chopping it up right here on Donnie's podcast. That's what's up. A lot up. of y'all be asking, man. Hey, man, how can I support you? And I say, hey, man, just watch the show. And they say, man, how can I really support you? Hey, man, get a T-shirt right now. DonnieHoustonWorld.com. You know what I'm saying? Black smoke, gray, white. We got the hats. You know what I'm saying? All that. All that. We got even more coming. Also, we got the. Uh, Membership going on right now, YouTube membership. My bad to do this in front of you. So no, you good, bro. No, no better time than the present. You know, what right, I'm saying? right, right, right. <laughs> uh, hey man, you can, you know a lot of y'all been asking me, man. Hey man, how can we see the full interview? We don't want to wait till the clips done. Hey man, uh, join the, uh, the membership team. You know what I'm saying? Some subscription membership. Uh, it's only four ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? But it's gonna give you access to the full interviews as soon as the first clip go out. A whole bunch of exclusive stuff, mixes, uh, behind the scenes stuff at the podcast, behind the scenes of me in the studio. Chopping That's up with our good up. people, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, check all that out, man. But, yeah, like you were saying, uh, it's about, you know, like you say, that promotion, man. Yeah, man, that's 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 vital. Bro, I, I, I just look at it like, bro, if, if if you got a business and marketing and branding is you don't have a budget for that, you won't have a business. Marketing and promotion is just as vital as you paying your rent. 
Why? Because you won't be paying your rent. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to allow you to keep paying. <laughs> right. right. So, I mean, that's what it is, man. That's what I'm on every day I wake up, man. It's about uh, customer service every day I wake up, man. Hmm. You, the, the, the greatest man, I always say this, man. The greatest man is not a ruler. The greatness of a man is when you're a servant, bro. Hmm. When I can when I can serve you, even though being in whatever status, quote, you are, you supposed to be, hey, can I still go downstairs and grab this for Donnie? Or can I, you know what I mean? Without feeling like I'm, you know what I mean? You know, the thing about it is if everybody embraced that, you wouldn't have to feel like the ego thing. Exactly. Man, I ain't doing that. It's like, nah, this is a way of life, bro. This you talking about God or Jesus or right. who you believe in. That's what he was doing. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. Like, yes, God sir. Rock, you know, Jesus broke down and then washed yes, the man's sir. feet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's about service, bro. That's yeah. what make the world go around. Yeah, you know man. Yeah. And, man, I ain't going to lie. I, I appreciate, uh, shout out to K. Reno and uh, the minister. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad came yes, through sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, last time, man. Shout out him and Cliche. They uh, they actually helped. I'm glad about- you said I was getting ready to move to that, but you did it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah. we're going to talk about the proclamation because I was going to go there before we closed out, but you okay. went right into it. Yeah, okay. go ahead. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. so they actually, man, pulled strings for me, man. Uh, actually, um, I've been doing a Spring Fest. Uh, in, in the Independent Heights area in Studewood uh, for like 14 years. The whole 14 years, man, I'm thinking like, man, ain't nobody seeing my work, man. I'm just, man, I'm like, dang. Then, you know, it's like I'm getting footage and all that and everybody come out and have a hallelujah time. And then I'm like, man, I thinking like, dang, this all, this all on my money, though, man. I ain't, you know, but the thing was, when at the end of the day, bro, just when you ain't thinking somebody ain't acknowledging what you got going on, bro, that's another thing, man. Keep it pushing, bro, because, man, it was just. There be the, them times you want to give up because you feel like. Man, yeah. and, 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 and like I said, when I say the street's been good to me. The reason why I say that is because, man, it was those times when my family might not even, I feel like they might not even be supporting me, even just with a good, good encouraging words, bro. When I go out of town, these people, man, they look at me as a genius because of the air freshener. But when you at home, all the time your home team don't see the diamond in you. They don't see the diamond in the sewage. But as soon as you go two hours down the road or three, four hours down the road, man, you get the love, bro, that make you want to keep going, bro. So when you come back to the H, you don't care what they think of the <laughs> saying. You cool. You doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I just want to let people know, man, whatever you're doing, keep pushing, man, because somebody is going to see. And, you know, at first – I was like, man, proclamation. Man, the mail giving them to everybody. Man, it's so watered down. Like, I don't even want that shit. But when I thought about it, man, I went home, bro, after I got it. And when I went home, some just told me, hey, bro, you ain't no Slim Thug. You ain't no Kiki. You ain't none of these cats out here, bro. Megan, you, you, you don't even, you know, you don't have that type of quotas unquote status so this should mean something to you because you are an entrepreneur being recognized that turns being recognized bro out of a city of what eight million people come on bro that gotta mean something to you so that shouldn't be watered down to you because for the simple fact you turned a street grind into a legitimate business bro you feel what i'm saying to where now hey man you don't sell no, you don't sell no drugs. You don't smoke no drone or nothing no more. No cigarettes, none of that. I never would have thought I would be at this point in my life, bro. Back then, I never would have thought this, bro. Mm. Just being sober minded. Mm. But I want to say, sober minded is when you at your highest form. That that's your highest velocity, bro. 
the natural you. Bro, that's when you that's when you that's when you're a bad motherfucker. I'll tell I'll be telling people that like God already made us live, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Like, Straight up. Like, For I, real. Tell you, like man, I know I was born live, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. The other shit you might see me doing just be my Yeah, own yeah, that just be your whole thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. For sure, man. So Man, I appreciate you having me, bro. Man, I, I ain't gonna lie, too, man. man. This is damn good, man. I think uh Anybody interested in entrepreneurship, you know what I'm saying? It's just a great story, just your life in general, but especially, you know, there's a lot of game here for entrepreneurs. And right. Anybody looking to make that pivot and that shift from the streets to. to actually, the, actually, I don't mean to cut you off. Actually, they can go get the book. Uh, I'm on like my sixth chapter. So that's why I haven't just been marketing and promoting it just yet. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I do have the book cover done. Uh, the artwork for the book cover, the name of the book, uh, the title of the book is called What Goes On in the Mind of a CEO. So with that book, it's going to bless a lot of people, man, to where if, you know, if you're, you're just starting to brand your own brand, you're starting to put your business together, or you're trying to launch your own business, excuse me, or if you already have your own business, and you may be at that point, you can't go no farther than that point. It may be one little tip sometime, bro. Just catapult you to open up the, the other realm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of people going to be, I'm I'm, real, I'm, a, I'm excited about it, man, because a lot mm -hmm. of people going to be blessed by, you know, uh, what I've been through, you know, as far as down my journey of, you know, this entrepreneur road. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say this too, man, I done figured out the game, bro. Hey, man, I'm going to just tell y'all hustlers out there that's still in the struggle. Hey, man, if you can sell drugs, fam, you can sell anything, bro. You mm. can sell anything legal, bro. You already got business game one-on-one. -on -one. All business game one-on-one -on -one is you got the plug. You the middle man. You can get it from the plug for a little cheaper, and then you know everybody who want it. That ain't that's strictly business. I don't care if that's product or service. That's strictly business right there. You know what I'm saying? And all the hustlers and grinders, y'all know what it's like. Regular normal people do not know what it's like to hold that scope money. They don't know what that's like, bro. You know what I'm saying? Coming from a person who in the streets, they automatically know that because they know if you spend that school money, you ain't going to have no more money. Now you're looking to big and borrow. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to put them little them little solid jewels out there, man. Mm. You know what I'm All saying? Right, you want to give your social media and all that before we close out? Yeah, definitely. Um, first of all, you can go on Facebook, Clyde Boats, my name on Facebook. Um IG, Instagram, you can go to Yandy Promotions on Instagram. Um, you can go to the website for show, uh, yandyshop.com. On my website, go check out everything uh, as far as the website. Um, also, I got my other clothing brand coming out as well. It's called Deontay Kalua. Mm. So, you know, Deontay is my middle name. So, you know, so... You know, I'm, we we uh, we working on that. I just got a lot of projects, bro. I got my hands so full right now, bro, to where, like, I just looked at it like this, man. Uh, working in the oil field, I give those people 84 hours a week, right? But then when I come home and I got my own brand, I wasn't even giving it 40 hours a week, fam. Mm. So just... To keep that in my mind, that was another jewel that I learned from 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 that. I mean, yeah, it's cool. You might make $300, $350 a day plus your per diem. But, bro, out of my trunk, I can, I can stay at, 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 the, at the HEB on, on McGregor with my trunk pop in two hours and make $350 just selling spray. That's mm -hmm. my own money. I don't have to work 12 hours to make that. But the thing is... Once I worked them three hours, I'd have made that, that money. I'm ready to go to the highs. No, if I stay out like it's a job, 
Like yeah, I you give. put them hours in on your yes, game. bro. Mm -hmm. Yes, all my projects will be done. You see what I'm saying? And so far as the the book, I want to. I'm I'm working on releasing the book and the documentary together. You know what I mean? So hmm. that's what it is. So yeah, that's what it yeah. Is. My my future vision. Just put this out here. My future vision is to be a marketing, advertising, and promotion speaker hmm. to where people are booking me, you know, ballrooms or wherever to speak on, to give my life story or to give them the marketing and promotion wisdom that I have. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm actually working on as well, too. So That's what it is. Yeah. You know, hey, man, the game is to be sold, not told. You yeah, know yeah, yeah, told. yeah. Have your money right when you call you in. <laughs> right. speaking the game. <laughs> Straight up, man. Yeah, Straight yeah, up, yeah, man. yeah. That's what it is, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you coming through. You know what I'm saying? It's been hella live, man. Uh, we were trying to put it together for a minute. Glad right. Glad sat down and, and, and got it together, man. Make sure y'all go to... Uh, Yandyshop.com Get you some, some fragrances with Everything else you got going on Stop by the shop If you're in H You know what I'm saying Right If you're visiting H Stop by the shop And uh, just stay tapped in With them man You know what I'm saying uh, Hey it's the Donnie Easter Podcast OG Yandy We up out there For sure Donnie Houston Donnie Houston Donnie Houston Oh yeah Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man.